Hey everybody, happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host Sinead DeFries and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was TV, and plus uh, <laughs> remind you guys to take your vitamins because everyone in the entire world is sick right now and if you talk to anybody, you will get sick as well. Joining us this afternoon is Josh Makuga. Yeah, I fought off the sickness last week, it's still lingering, I think it's just being thrown around this office, uh, but we are, it's a low energy. Energy TV talk here today, guys. A lot of things to talk about. Really excited to be here. You can't tell by my enthusiasm. Sasha's trying not to sneeze. Please cut to Sasha. There I'm not trying not to sneeze. I'm trying to get away from their nasty oh, germs. There you go. Who else is here? Sinead DeFries. Also here is Sasha Pearl Raver. I am not sick. We'll see what happens by the end of the show. <laughs> and David Griffin. I feel like I'm surrounded by death right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't really want to get sick. There's a lot of TV I have to watch this coming week, so i well, uh, got to stay healthy. You get sick then. Yeah. No, that's true. That's a good point. That's true. Over that's over true. Call into work and no one can argue with you. That's Nothing true. like yeah. sick TV watching, mm -hmm. really and true. Mm -hmm. Man, I'll tell you what, Mono of 1999, I watched a ton of TV. It was a rough year. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Mono of 1999 makes it sound like there was a Mono of 2017 or something else. Like, no, was there like, another Mono? The no, great Mono no, of 99. Yeah, I got, okay, I got just Mono. Sure. Yeah, it was, it right, was great right. times. That was before binging, so I couldn't even do any fun binging. It's true. That was the year that I moved to America. I was <laughs> seven. Nice. I was 17. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Uh, let's, before, uh, we didn't, basically this news dropped today, so we didn't get a chance to get a graphic up, but Westworld has been renewed for a season two. I have been on record as making a full 180 on this television program. After, and we're going to talk about last night's, as we go down into the Westworld premiere, but thoughts on uh, renewal of season two. Super Sasha excited. Cannot wait. So grateful that they picked it back up. Much deserving. I feel like all, well, I haven't been watching Divorce, but I feel like especially Insecure and Westworld are all deserving. Um, and I, I guess Divorce is my mom. Oh, you kept up on Insecure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know my mom's enjoying uh, Divorce right now, so okay. not in real. I mean, my parents this are happily married, but I mean, they're, she's enjoying the show. Club she's enjoying wow. the show. So it's good. To, I'm happy to hear that it got renewed. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. good for HBO. They need, you know, they need some freshness. Game of Thrones isn't going to be around forever, so they need something else. Hopefully, this is their next flagship series. For sure. And I, apparently, that uh, the average television watching audience for Westworld is over 12 million, which is more than Game that's of Thrones huge. season one. Yeah, that's so, big. Yeah. Sinead, how are you feeling? I think it's great. I mean, we talked a little bit about where else the show can go, like out of Westworld and all these other worlds. And I just, based on what we've seen so far, this is incredible television. I'm so hooked on it. And it would be a crime if they didn't get picked yeah. up. Agreed. Agreed. All right. What's first in the rundown? Sinead. During a Q&A at a real steel IMAX screening, director Sean Levy spoke to Collider Steve Weintraub about Stranger Things season two. Levy told the audience that he'll be directing episodes three and four of season two, just like he directed episodes three and four of season one. Levy also said that season two will debut in 2017 as promised, but probably not until the end of the year, and that season two will try and focus on a return to normalcy, as if that's even possible. David, of Sean's comments, what stuck out to you the most? Well, I mean, it's just it's so vague he did you know i think Sasha, you said it best he didn't really say anything and, and he can't i don't want him to say much i want him i want to come into the series fresh i don't know what's going to happen and he says things are going to come to normal i don't want the show to be normal the show is fantastic because it's not normal it's not something we've seen every day it's that throwback to the 80s or homage to the 80s that we love all those steven spielberg type films and i want him to hopefully stay on that track or shake things up remember earlier there were comments coming out they're going to do things different and shake things up it's going to be darker a little heavier than do that i don't want to see them go back to normal or try to be safe so i I think this is just misleading. I don't think he's really making a point either way. He's just saying, look, we're working on this stuff. This is a little bit of what we're working on, but I don't want to know too much. I'm glad I don't know too much. SPR? Well, what I think is interesting, if you read the whole article, was yeah. he also talked about how frustrated he was that Molly, uh, Bob, wow, this is how it's <laughs> going to go today. Molly Baby Brown? Molly Baby Brown. Uh, oh, Millie Bobby man. Brown's return was supposed to be kept secret. Mm -hmm. And then social media saw pictures of her trick-or-treating for Halloween in Atlanta, and they shoot in Atlanta, and that was sort of what made that go viral which is a bummer but did anybody actually think she wouldn't be back for season two that we would not be all about 11 i mean that's the reason the show was so brilliant she could do anything right now yeah. the girl is a cult figure now well supposedly she wants to be on the walking dead Ooh. which would actually get me to watch another episode of the walking oh, dead man. but oh, yeah what he said is oh, totally <laughs> vague completely arbitrary right. but in terms of going back to normal i think the whole point is going to be them trying as a as a as a community to sort of get past what happened with Will's disappearance mm -hmm. and that obviously being impossible so so impossible especially when a kid looks into his bathroom mirror and 
is all of a sudden in this all in different reality. Yeah. So yeah, and he's barfing uh, up slugs. Yeah, it's not good. It's Barf not going not back. To, it's no. not going back to normal. No. Here's what I after reading that whole article though, I love to see first the the thing that he talked about was that he directed episodes three and four because the Duffer brothers weren't done writing the show yet mm -hmm. as he, he was directing three and four, which is pretty cool. The fact that they were rushing writing and it still came out as good as it did. Now we're getting nine episodes and they're doing it basically out of superstition, but it sounds like they're a little more plotted out for season two. Mm -hmm. And um, there is something, I know it was vague. I know he really didn't say much, but there is something to the tone of what he said that they all know how serious this is. Not serious, but how important it is to audiences and audiences alike that they want to see season two and they feel the pressure on their shoulders. So it's like, listen, we didn't mess up season one. So if I direct three and four, hopefully we won't mess up season two. We'll just don't have the sophomore slump. I want to know, hey, Sean Levy, you coming back for another cameo? Is he going to put himself back in the show? Ooh. I wonder if that'll happen. I want bar vengeance. They're gonna, there's going to be bar vengeance. <laughs> Everybody wants bar vengeance. It will happen. Can we... Yeah, that's, there's got there's got to be an, an episode called Bar, Bar Vengeance. I believe it's actually Justice for Bar, but I like that Bar? you're making it so like but devious. Bar Vengeance. Sure, Bar Vengeance. Barb Wire. If she's know. okay. I don't know how she's okay because she didn't look too good. She looked, last time. she looked pretty dead. <laughs> pretty dead. Looking like Resurrector. She's gonna be like a, in the upside She's down, only gonna maybe. be able to exist in the upside down, but yeah. not be able to cross over. She's gonna become a monster. Maybe. Ooh. I can't wait to see her on Riverdale. Yeah, we get that like I think it's January, right? Yeah. yeah. God, we got so CW. much good TV coming yeah. up. All right, Sinead, what's next? In an interview with comicbook.com, actor Gabriel Luna, who plays Robbie Reyes, a.k.a. Ghost Rider on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., told the site that there have been talks about a possible solo spinoff series. The actor said, it's been talked about. There are definitely deals in place for that potential. Josh, would you like to see a spinoff Ghost Rider series? I think he's killing it right now on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we'll talk about last week's episode that Sinead uh, got around to watching. And thank you for the people that pointed out that they are in a little bit of a hiatus. So uh, there's not another episode to talk about. There's just last week's. However, uh, they were talking about maybe putting him into a feature, which I don't know. I don't think he's a big enough guy to carry a feature film. I know that Ghost Rider is a character that can carry a feature film. I don't know if he's a big enough actor. Uh, I mean, he's, he's not. But I think if he was going to put it into a solo spinoff thing, I think they should put it on Netflix. I think he should be thrown into that Defenders world okay. because I don't think the solo spinoff of a Ghost Rider in the Darkness really works on an ABC kind of thing. Just keep Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. there, and if you're going to spin off characters, either spin them off into Netflix mm -hmm. or spin them off in a, in a place that isn't network television. Listen, I haven't seen, uh, I've only seen the first two episodes of the season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he was the most impressive thing coming out of there, mm -hmm. and I agree. I think he should be on Netflix just because, I don't know, it's just ABC. It's, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's ABC. Like, they do what they do. They do what they do well. You know, but it's just, I, I don't want to see him on ABC because I said that's the darkest thing they've ever done on the yeah. show. He needs to be on Netflix where they don't have to hold back as much. So I like this yeah. actor. I like him. I want to see him do more. Very charming guy. I yeah. have not watched any of it, so I can't really speak beyond the fact that what I can say is all of my favorite shows that have debuted this season have been truly original. Atlanta, This Is Us, Pitch. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sick of it. Like, I'm having major burnout. I don't want another superhero show. Too many? I, it's too many. Like, you, I don't need to see to another spinoff. Yes, but that's original. Again, okay. like, what I don't need to see is the Aubrey Plaza spinoff show out of Legion. Okay. I don't need that. Yeah. Let Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. exist as it is. I just please more originality bring new characters bring, give us another preacher all those Do characters something new i just i don't need it i don't need another spinoff all those characters that we haven't seen in movies or that aren't big enough for movies like you're saying give Put them, them a show a yeah, yeah. But yeah. give them a, and let him a be a great part of agents of shield because you guys have, which he is that's been like the biggest thing that i've taken away from what hearing you guys talk about it is how incredible he is so yeah. let that be the boon it doesn't have to be its own thing we don't need to have private practice and gray's anatomy we can just have gray's anatomy Sinead, how you feeling I mean, I don't think that a Ghost Rider solo series would work on ABC at all, but I also don't think that there is even space for them in the Marvel Netflix universe right now. I think that they have their slate lined up, so if this was going to happen, we wouldn't see it for a while. But I do agree that if, if a show were... If a show <clears throat> for him were to come to fruition, it would work way better on Netflix than it would on ABC. But I will say, like, I'm not... I, I'm with you, Sasha, uh, on a lot of what you said, but also at the same time, Ghost Rider is absolutely incredible to me right now, and I find his performance and his character the most exciting thing coming out of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., therefore, that just makes me want to see a solo series because I almost just like don't get enough of him. You there know is what I'm something saying? to be sure. said about uh, 
in performance wise, and especially I think what Gabriel Luna does well in Ghost Rider is on the flip side, like how we always made fun of Bobby Cannavale in vinyl, mm -hmm. right? And how we snorted cocaine like a Hoover vacuum and then an exploding eyeball thing, uh -huh. right? His performance as Ghost Rider could have been over the top, but it's not at all. Like he doesn't scream when his face catches on fire. He's he's very like subdued. He he's uh, he owns this this soul bearing sat satanistic thing. Uh, and I think that's what really is selling me on Ghost Rider. He's very grounded. Him. Yeah. In, on a show that can get pretty cheeseball at times, he is extremely realistic. And it's like, you, you're just by him. You yeah. just you believe everything that he does and says on screen. And it's just incredible to me. Well, I think it's, a happy compromise might be, instead of giving him his own spinoff show on Netflix, just kind of maybe blending him in as a guest star on one of the shows. Just put him in that world yeah. without having to do a whole new series based around that sure. character. Yeah. He's, he's the permanent guest spot. Yeah. yeah. All right, Sinead, what's next? Former boy band members Donnie Wahlberg of New Kids on the Block and Nick Lachey of 98 Degrees are teaming up to produce Encore at CBS. The single camera comedy revolves around a former boy band member and his life 20 years later with the family, real life, and possibly reuniting the band. Sasha, is this too on the nose? No, <laughs> not even a little bit. Uh, as somebody who watched Rock the Boat on the Pop Network, which is all about the New Kids on the Block cruises that you can go on, and it does not follow the band, it follows the fans who go on these cruises, I can say I would love nothing more than this show. <laughs> Nick Lachey is like the X factor in this, where I'm like, oh, I don't know about all that, Nick Lachey. Donnie Wahlberg, though, the only reason to keep watching Wahlbergers. He's great on Blue Bloods. And this sounds, what I hope more than anything is, make it musical. Donnie Wahlberg, who also did the music for his brother, Mark Wahlberg's workout video. He got- Did you have that? Do I still have it on VHS? <laughs> did I have Mark Wahlberg sign it at the Lovely Bones what? junket? It's the only thing I've ever had signed. The only time I've ever gotten something signed when I was in like a professional situation. And basically I go to hand him the VHS and I was like, will you sign it? And he was like, oh, only if you use it. And I was like, oh honey. I use it. <laughs> oh, uh, that amazing. VHS is, I'll bring it in. Yeah, what is this? Does he um, work out in porn, his jeans? No, form uh, focus fitness. It's the lovely it's, bones junkie on yeah, top of it. Oh yeah, hell yeah. It's <laughs> him so in biker shorts and girls will like be doing squats and he'll be like, yeah, girl with that form. Like it's so <laughs> softcore porny, but the whole time the music in the background, Donnie Wahlberg. So what I was gonna say is, <laughs> make it a musical dog. It'll be like Empire meets Rock the Boat, but with a bunch of old, old white dudes. Mm -hmm. I'm in. I, okay. In. I saw New Kids on the Block in second grade. I saw 98 Degrees open for Journey. Hot. When Journey was coming back, Steve Perry had left the band, and it was before they went with the, the Filipino lead singer that they have now. Who sounds in just, just like, just like Steve, Steve Perry. Steve Perry. <laughs> I mean, I can tell the difference because I'm, I mean, I'm a Journey purist. Here we go. <laughs> but I've seen both boy bands. I also, my buddy opens for New Kids on the Block. He's a comedian. Opens for New Kids on the Block on those boat cruises. Wow. And he said they are insane. Yeah. They, it, these things are just, if they even just do a scripted series on a boat with new kids on the block, yeah. I'm in. This Have, is a fun idea. When they went back on tour, I saw them not once, not twice, but three times. Oh, and let me tell you, it is amazing to go to their concerts because it's all women who love them when they were 14 and now love them still when we are not 14. <laughs> and like, I would do a show about the girls who go to the concerts uh -huh. and still scream for Jordan Knight whenever like his shirt gets busted open and the women's machine kicks on. My, my friend, family friend has the new kids on the block, like the, like the tattoo of their faces and NKOTB. I love arm. your friend. <laughs> love your friend. Good for you, yeah. Mrs. Griffin. <laughs> Mrs. Griffin, David. All this optimism is just, it's, it's just wonderful. I mean, you, you two are, everybody's just so happy. This is the happiest I've been in a week. Um, but I mean, I think we're forgetting one small thing. You look at these uh, uh, words. Go. I mean, it, uh, what shows are you watching on CBS right now? Listen, Name one. Kevin can wait. It is the <laughs> highest rated it comedy. Is, it, it, the, CBS is America's television station. It is. It's multicam. Listen, wait. NCIS New Orleans is a show that I will occasionally Ooh. get into. Mainly I, the, because it, it was on something cops. more, right? more freeform, like not freeform itself as a form of ABC family series or show, uh, network. But if it was on HBO, Netflix, Amazon, something a little bit more freedom on it that didn't have to cater to what CBS produces. I might be down for it because it's on CBS. I'm not looking forward but to this. But it's because he's on Blue Bloods, I assume. I assume it's because Walter. Oh, and he, he, my, my grandmother loves Blue Bloods. It's a great show. He does, it's he, just, but not for me. It's All Magnum right. P.I. and Donnie Wahlberg. Instead <laughs> of calling it Encore, what if they called it Hanging Tough? Wow. <laughs> come in, come in. on. In. 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 100%. Can you name a 98 Degrees song? I can't name one. Uh, I, I, I was much more of an in no, it, no, no, it's, it's, uh, no, it's uh, I, I do care for you or something. Yeah. Every oh, day, David Griffin. I swear. 
No, that's different. No. That's, 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 that's different. That's all for one. That's oh, all. That's wow. all for one. Yeah. Sorry, well, no, there's guys. a song I think I do. Oh. It's called I Do. Oh, well, yeah, that, that wait, didn't that song open that? Oh, new in, in, in show? the Invisible Man. The Invisible no, Man was a good song. Invisible Man, yeah. Nick yeah. Lachey and Jessica Simpson had like a duet that opened the newlyweds. Uh, yeah. Obviously, yes. Shoot, they were like in the waterfall. Remember, like uh, all on each yeah. other, the water <laughs> yes. everywhere. Wait, name a 90 degree song because I, I can. I can get down. Invisible Man, I promise, is one, and I do. Okay. It's called I Do. Look I'm really David Bouchy. He's like, you're not I know the song. to me. You guys think I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. Because Ooh. of I'm you. Is oh, yeah. Because of you, the hardest thing, my everything invisible. Uh, That's yeah. what they're taught. Yeah. Listen, all I know is whenever it's April 30th, I get real sad because it's going to be my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 90 Degrees, <laughs> when they opened for Journey, all wore matching catchers. Uh, like catchers, like uh, you know, like a baseball oh. catcher, a catcher's <laughs> vest, and it yeah. said '98 on it. Wow, yeah, it was, it was like the worst. Oh. They had the worst style, but at the time, I know. It was I mean, they were worked, they were it killing it. Awful. God, I love it. All right, well, that does it for the news. Let's get into the superhero yeah. rundown. Um, last week, a lot of you guys in the comments were asking why we didn't talk about Young Justice. Why didn't we talk about Young Justice getting a season three? Well, the news dropped while we were shooting TV talk. So. I'm going to throw this to David because I've mm -hmm. never seen an episode of Young Justice, but I know that season one and two are streaming on Netflix right yeah. now, and I plan on watching it. I know it's a lot of television, but give us like what what you seen or excited about for Young Justice. Well, I mean, you see all the characters there. I mean, I, I know that, uh, I mean, Sasha even has been watching Supergirl, and, you know, so you have, like, McGann in there. You have Aqualad. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, Kid Flash or, 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 you know, you have all these different characters. They actually have all the Flashes in there. Like, Bart even shows up every now and then. And it's such a cool uh, show because it's basically like a young version of Justice League. Ah. You know, young Justice um, is also like, you know, Teen Titans, you know, before that, all those shows, these kids um, having to live up to the high, you know, to the expectations of their, I'm, I'll call them the, their father figures. Yeah. You have a character like Artemis, you know, working alongside Green Arrow, but she's with the young team. You have Kid Flash looking up to, you know, uh, Barry and all that. I mean, you have all these characters trying to prove that they can handle what the adults handle, and they always go head to head with the Justice League, which is always fun. Justice League, of course, you know, Superman, Green Lantern, uh, all, all those characters. So it's who's a very the, fun concept. Who's the Green Arrow kid? What's, I saw a person with a bow and arrow in the picture. Who is that? Oh, well, Artemis is a girl, and then... Is Artemis oh. the Green Arrow? No, 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 no. Oh. Artemis is working with Green Arrow. Okay. I'm getting my characters mixed up now. Okay. I have a brain fart, of course. It's all good. But no, it, it's a good show. we got two seasons. Yeah. Uh, it was canceled. I'm sure a lot of people that are... 2013. 2013. Like, a lot yeah. of people that are DC animated <laughs> fans are always frustrated because like, we had Green Lantern in the animated series right before the movie came out. That was one season. Canceled. This show, two seasons. Canceled. DC animated programs since basically since the old Justice League series and Batman animated series way back in the early 90s have struggled to find a legging somewhere just to grab onto, to hold onto, to get a series going. So I hope this, when they bring it back, I hope it goes to Netflix. Yeah. And I hope they at least commit to two or three seasons. And they and this got like the Family Guy thing where it had such a cult following. Right. People kept streaming it on Netflix. Yep. The toy sales of yep. it all was basically why we're getting a season. The reason three. why I wanted to go to Netflix is uh, Josh and I, I hope you got to see, we got to interview the oh, cast, uh, the creators of Voltron which has done a great job. It's coming back, and they did a great job handling that animated series. I hope that it would go to Netflix to do the same yeah. thing with that. Yeah, yeah. seems like mm -hmm. the, the right home for it. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I really didn't know a lot about it because I didn't really get into the superhero TV, and, and I really wasn't watching any animated superhero TV back then, like Young Young. Just what started for me. So. Batman the animated series came out in '92. Yeah. Oh. So Dude, I, I, I would have been I would have been eight years old, and then after yeah. that it kept going. There's Bruce Tim, then he did it Superman, then Justice League. This kind of kept going. I was always stuck with that DC Warner Brothers animated team over there. Yeah. They do such a good job with their shows. Yeah. Really I love good. Batman the Animated Series. Me too. Yeah. That was one of those. It's still good. I've, you can watch it on, I think, Amazon Prime. You can. It's still good. It still yeah. holds up. Cool. All right. Uh, Sinead, let's talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because we didn't okay. talk about it last week. And I mistakenly said we'll, talk, we'll do a double episode. Well, they're on hiatus right now. Right. I think the biggest thing we got out of this episode is that uh, the feet of Johnny Blaze basically showed mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Teasing the fact that we may see a Johnny Blaze in the future. Down the line, yeah. Down the line. Uh, would you want to see that? I don't know. Like, I don't... Does it seem like too much? It doesn't seem like too much. It just right now it just doesn't seem necessary for them to start like, you know, to bring a whole arc of him in, but it could yeah. be cool, right? Like yeah. it's the character we know because of the movies and it's like it might be a fun thing to do, but I agree that the the best part about this episode was the origin, you yeah. know. Um, and it was a little bit of a different version, which I really liked, and it, they kind of played up on that. It just goes to show more and more that Ghost Rider is the best part of this episode yeah. because even when I was talking to you before, I'm like, I barely remember this episode. And then you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, Johnny Blaze. I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. And that's yeah. like what sticks out to me. But I was reading, interestingly enough, is that the show is 
dipping in re- oh, in bad. ratings. So Unfortunately. they've got uh, this last episode was their um, uh, season low. Yeah. And this episode before that was their season low. Mm-hmm. So it's just getting worse and worse and worse. But I yeah. do think that this was a good episode. They kind of left it on a cliffhanger, and now we don't know what the hell is up with uh, um, Coulson and, yeah. and Fitz, yeah. too. But um, it, it to me, it's still good. Like, I'm still invested in it. It's still good. I feel like this episode was better than the episode before, mm-hmm. where I, I, it's almost like when they, it seems like they have a little more freedom every once in a while, where they'll, they'll take a more of a creative approach to things yeah. and that's what works for them. Um, but that's how, just how I feel about this whole season altogether. And they just need to keep playing that Ghost Rider stuff. Now that we have his origin story, like this is really um, a good introduction to who he is. They should have done his origin story sooner, yeah. I think, honestly. Um, but I really like the episode. See, so the younger brother in the wheelchair, he's in Fear of the Walking Dead and he is kind of a punk. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like him in Fear of the Walking Dead. Obviously, like all of Fear of the Walking Dead, I, don't even know if I like it, but uh, th- I definitely don't like that guy, the, the kid in that, because his storyline was so far fetched. And um, but the the storyline, th- who he plays in Agents of Shield is fantastic. I think he's very he's likable. Very good. Yeah, and him and them finally tracking down the uncle and the uncle actually being the bad guy right. um, <clears throat> makes total sense. I just hope they don't they don't they don't end his storyline here and they're like, you know, thanks for playing Ghost Rider. Because it almost feels like they're trending towards that. I know, that. I know. And Doesn't it, it feel it, like that? Yeah, and it makes me feel like the Fitz and Coulson thing are going to kind of take uh, precedent right yeah. now. But, and like, th- there's a bunch of ways they could go with this. They could make this, um, we're searching for Fitz and Coulson and they're like, mm-hmm. whatever, elsewhere. Um, for the rest of, we only have a few more weeks before we, we go on that winter hiatus yeah. and they don't come back till the spring. Right. So they could play it that way or this could be a quick kind of one-off thing, which I kind of hope it is because if this is the end of Ghost Rider and it's back to Business no Ghost usual, Rider, yeah. it's going to suck. And if, and if their storyline is let's go play with that AI woman yeah. and see what happens next and we'll go a little Westworld and she's going to come alive or something. I'm like really? That's we use Ghost Rider for that, and all. Yeah, I would I would be kind of butthurt. If He's that, just the that best that part about this show right now. The, the season started out so strong because it was all about him. So I I would hate to see him leave. If they I'm give us you. his origin story and then we're like, yeah. bye. Yeah, and he rides off into the sunset, figuratively, literally. Anyway. Yeah. All right, let's go into Supergirl. I, man, I gotta tell you, I'm quickly becoming a big Supergirl fan. This is a really good season. Yeah. It's a good season to jump in on. Yeah. For sure. I don't even I don't even think I want to go back and watch some of those episodes that I missed last season because I'm having so much fun this season. You don't have to. I feel like because it is in some ways a little bit procedural, you yeah. don't really need to. Like they're bringing in different uh, villains now. I mean, the thing that I thought was so fantastic about this particular episode, did anybody else watch? David, oh, yeah. did you watch? Oh, yeah. Alex's storyline. Everything that's going on with Alex right now, the thing, the reason I love Supergirl is because I feel like from the start, they have tried to tell stories that weren't just about superhero dumb. It's also about society right now. Like they've taken on sort of like what happens when there is like with feminism and with now like same sex questioning of sexuality stuff. Didn't feel a little forced to you? It didn't. I actually really liked it, but it felt forced to you? A little bit. Just, I don't know. It just seems convenient that she's like, oh, I'm. I'm gay, and I mean, I don't know. It just seemed a little. I don't. I don't nothing know. Nothing doesn't happen. I know people question their sexuality sure. all the time. Like that. I know that happens, but just every time it's on network, it's on TV. I'm like, is that? This didn't feel authentic to me. I don't necessarily me. I don't know. feel like it was forced. <coughs> I honestly felt like that may be one of the most organic relationships really? on the show. Okay. I felt like the Jimmy Olsen Kara thing was a little more forced yeah. than than yeah. this one okay. is. Um, I would. I thought that that Monel and Kara were gonna make are, like, kissing faces. Towards, of yeah. course they are. But you yeah. knew that the second he showed up. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the reason that they brought him in. Yeah. Obviously, she needs somebody who understands her. <laughs> and when she dumped Jimmy at the very beginning of the season, before they even gave yeah. it a chance, I'm like, yeah. the dude showed up with pot stickers and pizza. How could you? Right. So you know that that's where they're going. I really like the mon story in this yes. one. Him going out, you know, and kind of spreading his wings, learning how Earth culture works. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. This, this show's having fun. You know, I think it it's, it's, it's able to breathe on uh, CW right now. For sure. Do you think that... I actually kind of like the alien storylines of, you know, where they fit in society and like a immigration kind of a thing as well. But I I really like that Jimmy Olsen is going to turn into like a vigilante. Do you not like that? That's the thing where I like I get it, but I don't know. Sell me on it. Why do you like it? You know what I'm just realizing? I should have worn those earrings for the Halloween costume. I do you have pierced ears? No, but I could have like taped them on oh, there. Okay. But they're the Sasha earrings. That would look so much better. Actually, these are saucy. 
which was my nickname growing up. Uh, S-A-S-I, what's up, <laughs> Oakland? Uh, but continue though, you were saying, the reason you like this particular storyline is? Well, because I think Jimmy Olsen needs to have a little bit of street cred with the team. And I like that the guy, because right now he's just kind of playing cat co. Right. right. He's like this, a little bit of a lame duck editor in chief. And he's finally like getting a little bit of balls because the bald guy from Sex and the City is, he was in Sex and the City, yeah. right? Yeah. He's kind of an ass. Uh, but Jimmy, he's because he wants to actually do his part in the, in the fight. And the guy's helping him with a costume. He's helping with a name. Da, 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 da. It is working for me. Yeah. Because that the dude, the actor that plays Jimmy Olsen, he's a big guy. See, and my he's kind thing of is, is I think he's going to end up becoming the damsel in distress that Kara or Kara is constantly saving. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. Oh, really? Which I think, at least in the beginning, and I like that part of it. That's okay. my hope of how they're going to play it out. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sold. She's David, not are sold. you sold? I don't. I don't know, but I am sold on Cadmus. I, I, I like the. I like the villain story. I like how they. Te and I love. Suella um, Mischke, the yeah, brawless wonder. Yeah, the brawless wonder. But I also love too uh, Lex Luthor's sister. Oh, oh Lena. Lena. I, Lena. I actually got to uh, interview her at Comic Con a few years Look back. Look at him. Lighten I know. Lighten up. up. This is, she, oh, she, sorry, she, Mrs. For, for, Griffith. For we got some blushing going on. Uh, for those of you who are, of course, uh, uh, fans of all things in the UK, like I am, uh, she was on a show called Merlin. Uh, she played Morgana. Oh. And she was very good. Ooh. Very sassy. So and she's really Still nice watching. and she's very nice. So I got to interview her a few years back when she was on that show and now she's in Jurassic Park and all this kind of stuff. But I am. I yeah. am digging her. I like Lena Luthor. I like this. She's great. And I like how they kind of that tease at the end, you know, spoiler alert, of course, we're talking about yeah. the show with uh, Cadmus. Yeah. You know, and she's, you know, with Cadmus. Maybe she's still, I, I don't think she's a bad guy yet. No. I'm not I, sold on that. Double agent. She's a Luthor. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking yeah. double agent. Double agent, yeah. 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 Totally. Mm -hmm. Um, Luther, yeah. yeah, but I was a, I was a big fan of that, and I, I, you know, we saw the teaser this week of the crossover, mm -hmm. the four night crossover event, and it's basically going to be kind of focused on Supergirl, which makes sense because she's just coming into the they world. They have to integrate her more. Yeah. Right. yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, that four team, the trailer, man. I, well, plus I, too because she's not in the flashes; she's in a different Earth. Yeah. so they have to, you know, so they have to kind of yeah, get her in there somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah that, that that looks like a ton of fun. All right, let's talk about Arrow, uh, David. This so it begins. So Dolph it begins. Lundgren is enough said Dolph. on that. Yeah, Are Ivan you know? Drago. He's Drago in, is in Arrow. He's playing the big bad in the Arrow flashbacks this season. They introduced so him in good. this episode. It's so good. Dolph is back. How it's, many episodes is he going to be on? At least a couple. Yeah. Hope, hope they don't kill him off too oh soon. Basically, God. Oliver's tied to a chair. And Dolph Lundgren's like, you know, just 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 monologuing. <laughs> just doing some great monologuing. Yeah, he is acting. It's great. Telling his stories, pants like you know, the villains like to tell stories yeah. before they do. So. I mean, it's it's so good. Drinking oh Russian God. vodka. Drinking Russian vodka with that accent. I mean, yeah. it's, just, it, it's back to Rocky IV. It's back if to Rocky dies, IV. He dies. He dies. I must I'm gonna break have you. to on demand it's so that. Good. That's so good. Yeah. Arrow's great this season. Well, Arrow I'm actually is, yeah. Is of all the shows, killing. I'm actually really excited about Arrow. Every time I watch it, I just don't know what I'm going to get because yep. it's back on form again. Yep. Whereas Flash, I think, is still solid. Um, we've got a week off this week because of the yep. election. Uh, and then Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, we'll is, to watch Flash. Right yeah. I, I'm, I love Arrow. Love yeah. It. This, you know, what's cool about th this episode of Arrow is that, one, we're getting a little more Prometheus, so mm -hmm. we're getting those through characters. Interesting reveal about yeah. Prometheus is using the names in Oliver's book yep. and taking those targets off. So who I, I still want to know who's Prometheus. Yeah. Well, is he is somebody tied to Oliver's past? You want to throw that spoiler up, up there real quick, Cody? No. If you guys haven't caught up on Arrow, because I'm going to give a big spoiler here. So the end of the episode, they, I, they want you to believe that Captain Lance no. is Prometheus. Yeah. But he's being played he's, because yeah. he's a raging alcoholic. And I got to tell you. Yeah, he's not that good with a bow and arrow. No. Yeah, and no he way. plays an awesome drunk. If you guys have ever wanted to see mm -hmm. what like that alcoholic kind of thing is, Lance is playing it to a T. Yeah. And uh, I, he's a really, really good actor. I don't, I don't know who it is. People kept tweeting me this week saying it's Tommy Merlin. They want him to come back. Tommy Merlin's been dead since season one. And he's the star of the... Um, the show on uh, uh, Chicago PD, I think. Or one of the Chicago shows. Chicago Med, Chicago PD, Chicago, Chicago Hope. Fire, Chicago, Chicago Hope. It's a Chicago Expanded Universe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they have crossover events. They have a shameless yeah. crossover. They have crossover yeah. events, yeah. They, they actually did. Events. They do, yeah. They, they, did. Really? they really yeah, they did. Oh, yeah. Man, I didn't they know did. that. Uh -huh. They solved it, though, so it's okay. Oh, okay. So and and, and he was on The Affair for a while, too. Yeah. He was on The Affair yeah. for a time. So, so everybody thinks it's Tommy Merlin. I don't think Tommy Merlin has, has time to come no. back. I think maybe because we are in an alternate timeline, it could be something and apparently this week Katie Cassidy's coming back as 
Black Siren. Yeah, because they, they had her locked up in the prison. She's yeah. still around. Yeah. It's not Ooh, Black uh, Canary. Black Siren. I like. I'm not gonna say a bad word because I, I, I like Katie Cash. I like that version of her as Black Siren. She's a good villain. I'll tell you what. I started following her on Instagram about two months ago. <laughs> All she posts is cat stuff, so you two might get along. Oh, I she love loves that. kitty cats. Girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this, I, I'm I don't know who Prometheus is. No, I no. want to think that it's human target, but I don't think it's human target. Yeah, it's... and I think if it's it's too on the nose if it comes back and it's Malcolm Merlin, mm -hmm. or if I was thinking like, is it Oliver's dad? Because yeah. he knows about the list. Mm -hmm. Like, if they didn't kill Oliver's dad, if it was like a fake death, I don't. Alternate timeline. Alternate timeline. It could, could be, be anybody, Oliver's yeah. dad. Barry messing with the timeline again. But yeah, uh, Arrow this week, solid 4.85 out of 5 for me. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk Legends because Legends just got picked up for four more episodes going to 17 episode. It. Yeah, Legends of Tomorrow kind of Look at that team it. strutting in there looking. Is that looking. Brandon Routh? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I say that every single time. Yeah. That's Superman. Every time there's a picture of all of them, I'm like, Brandon Routh is working? I mean, yeah. he's the Adam, but you know, Is that Superman. Dominic Purcell too? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and Victor Garber? Victor Garber. <laughs> wow. Victor Garber was on. I like that we've been doing these reviews yeah. out here for like four weeks. Well, I I interesting side note, because people always <laughs> ask, like, how come you guys don't talk about power on stars? Victor Garber was on power mm. as a regular. But then, of course, when Legends of Tomorrow picked up and got more popular, he signed on to do that. He kind of like wrote him out of power. Now he's yeah. doing that full time. He left stars to do CW. Boom. Boom. Get that CW money. Yeah. yeah so Legends, I thought, was... It's, it's been solid this season. It's entertaining. You know, it's a okay. little hammy at times, a little cheesy compared to the rest of the series, but I still have fun. It's, it's easy to watch. It doesn't take a lot of brain power. What is course. going on and what's trending? Like, what, what in the Legends of Tomorrow world is affecting Arrow and Flash or is anything affecting? Well, and what is the four team crossover really going to do? Well, that's the thing. We don't know because, I mean, all these like alternate timeline, but these guys were outside of time because they are the new time masters. So, Legends of Tomorrow crew is outside of time. So, they might not have been affected mm -hmm. as much by that. So, they can go in and out of time wherever they want. So, I think they're going to be the neutral players in whatever the four part crossover is. They can, you know, they're, I don't know. I think they're outside of all that, even okay. though they're going to be included. So I don't know how yeah. it's going to work out. All these timelines. Earth it's a mystery. Stuff. Legends of tomorrow. Legends of tomorrow. Yeah. So you, if you were going to rank right now, the CW, CW shows. shows. Ooh, wow. Obviously. I only watch you, one of them. You only watch one of them. So <laughs> you're going to give Supergirl. David, where are you going to put Number one, the yeah. hundred. No, uh, <laughs> superhero. It's not a superhero show. Oh, should we watch the hundred? The hundred is the best CW show. Period. It is, the, it, it, it is the. It is the. How many seasons are there now? This is four. Okay. I think four. Correct me, fans, if I'm wrong. I think four is coming up. This uh, might be one of those. I think the hundred is the CW's best show currently okay. on. Okay, but superhero shows. Flash. One. 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 Number one. Okay. Um. Flash. Arrow. Supergirl what is the other show? Yeah. Flash. Super Arrow. Supergirl. Legends. Okay. Supergirl surprised me. So in the power the, rankings, I'm gonna take. Arrow, okay. Supergirl, Flash, Legend. Flash had a weak episode the pre. Uh, Flash couple had weeks a weak ago. episode it was, since they left the Flashpoint. Oh wow! Yes, me. Oh man. Yeah. I have not. I think I think Flash has let me down this year. All right. I've been a huge Flash fan. There's it's the third season. Arrow has definitely stepped it up. Yeah. It's, it's a close battle for one from a number one spot right All there. All right. Okay. Let's uh, talk about Westworld. Obviously, we talk about Westworld uh, up top. They got a season two. This episode of Westworld, Cody, you should probably throw that spoiler alert up there because if you guys aren't caught up on this week's Westworld, we are going to spoil a bunch of stuff because this was probably the biggest reveal of mm -hmm. the season, which we talked about, like the fan theory that what we saw at the end of the episode, uh, that Bernard is, in fact, you know, AI, was talked about. I mean, Sinead said it, when did you say, like episode one or two? I remember like watching it and immediately being like, that guy's a host. And yeah. I remember talking about He's it like the very next the very next episode with us because I think that was a huge um, his whole storyline has been kind of questionable, mm -hmm. right? There was those so many theories like maybe Bernard is Arnold, but you guys, I know we're, I'm gonna skip all the way to the end right now. Yeah, yeah. But the second she said what's behind this door and he said what door? Yeah, I was my like my oh, heart yeah. Sunk yeah. into my butt. I was they, set like, up, they set it up so well before, yeah. when they were like, so the hosts good. don't see the house because yes. they're not programmed to see the he house. He said yeah. it right before. He's like, oh, they're only programmed to see what they're meant to see or right. something like that. And then she's like, what's behind the door? And he's like, what door? And I was like, <gasps> oh mm -hmm. my God. But we have a spoiler alert. Okay. Yeah. The end of the episode <laughs> broke my heart into a million pieces because even though Homegirl is kind of a crazy bitch, yeah. right? She 
obviously, when I thought that Bernard was a host, I thought that that was the reason why she was having sex with him. I was like, she's having sex with him because like we're supposed to think that hosts are that's what they're there for, mm-hmm. right? Like having sex and how she didn't seem I, the first time that they showed them like waking up together or whatever. She got out of the bed, I remember, and he was like, "Where are you going?" And she's like, "Eh." And that was what actually made me think that he was a host because uh. of the way she was treating him. Mm. Turns out she's just a bitch, but he's <laughs> actually a host. <laughs> But then I actually felt sad because when I realized she didn't know he was the host, um, because that's not what I thought. And then he he is commanded to kill her. That was the most like heart wrenching thing ever into the blurred out background where you see the blood stain on the yeah. wall like that actually happened the i would have never guessed they would have killed her off head like smash that. of the of the episode oh too. i knew they were going to kill Did her you? off the second i saw he was 3d printing a body and i was like oh don't worry she'll be back he's 3d printing a new version of her the second I saw that they mm. were going downstairs and the 3D printer was going, oh, I was stop. like, that's what's going on, man. Well, I will say, like. So you don't uh, think Tisa Thompson's in on it, her character? Tessa? Tessa, Tessa Thompson. Tessa, sorry. Tessa Thompson. I don't yeah, think so. I want to know where <laughs> Shannon Woodward has gone, who grabbed She's her. She's off the grid, right? I have a feeling right. that what happened was she was grabbed by somebody. If the two timeline theory exists, mm-hmm. and we are existing in two timelines, right. which is Anthony Jimmy Blake Simpson's character is in the, the past. young version. Yeah. I think Jimmy Simpson's character is the young version of Ed Harris. Yeah. So Got if. It. She was snatched. I'm guessing she's snatched either by the man in black or by an AI who is uh, who is aware. That's my guess. So I think she's not dead. I think she's being kept safe. Okay. I think that right now, because I also like, let me just say, 2016 has some messed up moments with doors. Hold the door. <laughs> What door? Yeah. Dude, wow. doors. HBO. It's all about doors. Yeah. Um, but this episode, I knew that they were, this was going to be, I actually deleted a tweet because I tweeted, come on, you guys, Bernard's uh, a host. The minute the show started, because we have only seen hosts wake up. I think that's part of the sort of theme of this show. Yep. We have not, like we've seen some people sort of like have a moment of that, but in general we see Mavis, we see Dolores, and now Bernard waking up. We don't mm. see other people. We saw Jimmy on a train sort of being awoken, yeah. but we haven't seen anybody else like wake up in bed the way we did last night. So I deleted that tweet because I was like, I don't want to spoil anything for people who are watching. That was nice. Cause I, and then it happened and all yeah. I tweeted was called it. So do you <laughs> think that when he wakes up from that dream of his son, do you think that he in fact too is becoming smarter as well? Yes. I think well, I think the thing is the that's his backstory, which has right. been implanted in him. Yeah. But I think they are all becoming more self aware. Well, also you had Anthony Hopkins say that this is all under my control. That's so why he I'm, knows everything. But that's why I, I, I still think. Let me make sure I get her name oh, right. Yeah. It's, it's it's Tessa T- Tessa Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson said the words a blood sacrifice. Anthony Hopkins said the same phrase again. I think she's in on. It. I think no, she no, knows. No, you don't think she... you had Rodrigo Santor? What's his face? We ha- we he when they were was, sleeping together. There yeah. was a host in the bed watching them. So yeah, my that's assumption true. is is he can see feeds. He, right. So he probably saw the. Feeds. The only thing Hopkins needs to do is just wave his finger and they stop. Yeah. Like, you he's, know, they can He's stuff, smarter yeah. than everybody. Yeah. Is what, or, or Full what Hannibal. Do you think yeah. he's Full aware Hannibal. of everything? This is like the future, right? That's happening in the future based on what is happening with Dolores right now. Yeah, that's right? my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, because that would kind of make sense as to why he can see everything that's going on now, but maybe not back then. Well, maybe right? Shannon Woodward got grabbed by Dolores. Maybe that's how we're going to find out these are two storylines. Would you have yeah. to wonder, that means like Dolores' mission, if it you call it a mission, didn't work. Because she's still around right. 35 years later right. with uh, Ed Harris. I don't know if he was scalping or doing whatever, you know, doing whatever he was with her in the barn. I mean, so it's like you wonder if like her mission to find the maze even ended up freeing her. Because mm-hmm. exactly. 30 years later, she's still, you know, pining after Teddy. Yeah. You know, uh, but oh, also too awesome uh, action sequence uh, uh, with, with, with the natives uh, oh, yeah. chasing uh, them. And the, I, I love yeah, that machine cool. gun they use. And everything. Yeah, it's so the, cool. The Gatling yeah. gun. Yeah, really gun. Cool. yeah, very cool. There's a part of me I, I didn't even think about that they're going to replace her with. Neither body. did I. I might be wrong. No, that's just my you, speculation. I right, right, but I, that's why the uh, the uh, graphs of Bernard were down there too. Yeah. The sketches of him. When he looked and he was like, I've never seen this person before. I was like, It looks Bernard. like nothing to me. Yeah. I know. Nards. Oh, the Nards gosh. dog. Gosh. Um, and the the Dolores thing. I mean, there's such crude drawings, but that's them. You you have to imagine that they've been down there forever and. And Anthony Hopkins is slowly but surely like plotting his mm-hmm. barb vengeance on this whole thing. Mm. Uh, there is just, man, there there's something that I has been bothering me since last week, and we talked about it, and this week too. Is they keep walking Maeve around, and well, yeah, nobody it, is paying attention the only, to Maeve. The only thing that that 
I bothered me on that one. I think the one excuse we talked about this last week is the guy has his computer, mm -hmm. so he's kind of acting like he's doing diagnostics and I on like her that a you little said, bit. Walk slower. Walk slower. Because yeah, don't, that at least made me feel yeah. like it, it's more acceptable. The only thing that got me is she was giving people side glances, she's yeah. looking like she like doing side glances, and then she was just staring into the operation room. Like, but I mean, but he was at the computer the whole time, acting like he's doing diagnostics yeah. on her. So maybe that's the one thing. How it is a little ridiculous, though. This is totally off topic, but how come this mannequin challenge isn't called the Westworld challenge? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right? Because all this mannequin challenge is basically like when the people come in with the things. Terrible the way, branding, HBO. Yeah, you should have just made it yours. The Westworld challenge. Uh, you know when those guys come in with the masks on, the yeah. ET yeah. guys? Mm -hmm. Why are, do they wear the masks? Like, what do they need to? A host, like normal people are there breathing that air. Oh, why okay. why good, is that? Good, good Because it's not a cinematic? I, I, I agree with you. It's one, you're 100% right, but why do also, they need dude, to we talk it? about how Tandy Newton is stealing the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's the most it interesting character. Show. It's her show. I mean, every time she's on screen, I'm just fat and enthralled with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to so go to like a dinner party with Tandy Newton and have her tell me the reels of the world. I mean, she's the one who's got, I, I don't think, you think Anthony Hopkins knows what she's up to? I don't think he knows. I think that Anthony Hopkins might have put Dolores and Bernard in motion because he knows that there's the possibility of a tape takeover and he does realize mm -hmm. that he's getting older and he needs people to inherit his mantle. Right. Uh, I think that Mavis could possibly be part of that. Okay. I think he knows everything. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't think it's any, there's no way that he wouldn't know anything. Yeah. Everything, I mean. I do say the moment when, when Dolores and they, fi they finally get to the, uh, the Oasis, that was a pretty awesome moment. Uh, mm. I, I'm listen. I, I've come full circle on this show. I hated it at first, crazy. and now I understand so it. Now, now I understand it because it's it's a really it's a. You understand? I mean, I don't understand any of it, but no, no. I no. Still like love I it. understand why the show exists, and I understand why we like it. It's uh -huh. because it it searches our own dilemma. Is what would we do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought Jimmy Simpson had some incredible dialogue yesterday. Yeah. And the moment, like this, the scene that I think stuck with me more than anything is the scene where he's like, I have somebody waiting for me at home, but then has sex with her and is so obviously falling in love with her, but is aware of what the situation is, is both pointedly aware of what the truth is and yet can't help but fall victim to his own emotions, which I think is like the greater scope of this show. Mm. Yeah. So you think like, now, if if he has, um, I'm gonna sneeze. Great. Oh, here we go. Sneeze, sneeze balls. Yeah. Let it out. Stop. Let it out. Let it go. Makuga, if you talk too much, it's gonna yeah. go away. Well, we have a exactly. show to produce. We can't just wait here for you Spoiler to sneeze. Spoiler alert! She's got a sneeze. <laughs> she's got a sneeze. Spoiler guys. alert! Now I have sneeze blue balls. Me My too. Josh gave them to me before forever. the show started. Whoa, guys! I'm not giving anybody blue balls, okay? Um. Anyways. Sneeze balls. Uh, <laughs> what I was gonna say. So if this is kind of like leading up, so then we're saying that. Uh, the man in black is still searching for whatever they were searching for together, and then Dolores has like somehow never got to it. But then, uh, that's yeah, that is thing. a good point. Well, she could have been shot. She could she could have been dead, taken away by uh, the medic people. That's why he's still searching for but it. But then it just seems like he's lost his damn mind or something. Like he's crazy or yeah, like he's lost. Don't mind. you think he lost his mind when he had sex with a robot, saying there's something else waiting for me maybe, outside of here, like, but I still love you? Maybe he's lost his touch with reality or something like that. Because even like when we see that, when we saw the Man in Black and Dolores' interactions, it didn't seem like he cared about her at all. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But we don't know exactly what happened right. once he closed the barn door. I guess it's been 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. essentially, if the two storylines or two timelines exist. I need like a learning annex class after this season. I'll mm -hmm. teach it. <laughs> we should make a map. Make a map. Oh, we could make this a map. This is a show we should watch together. So we, I love uh, the yeah. show. Maybe finale get together? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk about last night's 90-minute Walking Dead code. You can keep the spoiler alert up there. I'll be there. on my phone checking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um I got to tell you, I don't know why this episode was 90 minutes. It did not need to be 90 minutes. <laughs> it did minutes. not need to be 90 minutes. I have, I thought that I, I love the first episode of this season. I really, really like the second See, I episode. Didn't love, I, I did not like the first episode at all, but I've loved the last two. Really loved I, the I last really, two. I really liked the last two episodes a lot. I really did. Um, especially, and uh, I mean, I loved the Carol uh, King Ezekiel yeah. episode mm -hmm. the most. That was so much fun. This episode yeah. was just boring. Yeah, it, it's just, I feel like, again, Jeffrey Dean Morgan... Incredible actor, like he's just he's 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 just spewing out this dialogue, and it's like, 
It just gets repetitive. I'm like, yeah, we get it. Like, you're a hard ass. You're a badass. You broke Rick. Or did you break Rick? Maybe you didn't break Rick. I don't know. I think Rick's got a little, little glimmer in I'm his eyes. I'm glad I wasn't the only one thinking that. That I'm like, I don't I think Rick's like broken. Beat, no, no, no. I feel oh, like I'm beating over be. the head with yeah, Negan it's, dialogue. It's, just, it's too much Negan dialogue. Yeah. Again, I always go back to the comic books. I was like, David, how can we like the comic books? We don't like the TV show. It's like, because I get little 15 minute snippets when I yeah. read a comic book and I put it down for a month. I don't have to see it again for 30 days. Yeah. But like an out 90 minutes, not you know, an hour without commercials of him just. Going on and yeah. on and monologuing and monologuing. It's like it's all just, about it's too these much. guns. And then yeah. he finds the guns basically because he hears a creak in the floor. I just thought this episode was kind of a waste of 90 it's minutes. Just, it's just too long. It didn't need to be 90 minutes. No, like, no, maybe no. this was like, now hopefully it's a different episode for the mid season finale. And it's like, oh, it's a 90 minute mid season finale. Or, you know, the first episode is 90 minutes. I get it. But for episode four? Yeah. Yeah. I don't and, think you need it. You know, Rick, who <clears throat> has been Mr. Uh, militant. Mm -hmm. This whole series is now in this episode, like, don't kill Olivia. Olivia is nobody. Yeah. And he's like, we got to give them all the guns. No, dude, you hide the guns. The one on the list, just hide them all. Mm -hmm. Hide all of the guns because you need guns, not only against Negan, but you need them against the walkers. Okay. Because right. eventually the walkers are going to get sent on because the, that has to be something. I just thought this episode was a waste. I was bored. Um, it was really kind of upset. Like, I was, like, disappointed by the episode. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with The Walking Dead, it's like, for me, I, I, I don't even know I'm not, like, the biggest fan of these last few seasons, but it, it's hit or miss. I think there's some excellent, excellent television mixed in with some some crap. And I feel like this episode was one of those crap episodes, but the last two, I oh. really enjoyed. I love The Walking Dead in its smaller moments. Yeah. Like, this is such a good job. They have such good, the cast is incredible. I've never accused the cast of anything. Jeffrey Dean Morgan is the man. The boy yeah. can act. Yeah. I just feel like he's kind of, wasted overdone just, it's just overdone even yeah. though i know in the comics his characters like that but again 15 minutes each issue versus a 90 minute you're sitting there for 90 minutes hearing the dialogue over and over it's again it's like when you get that friend that you don't know if they have like a real personality mm -hmm. you're like I, I would like to get to know that person except that does he always talk and just like this ha ha rick you're gonna come around the corner and we'll stick it in your butt like well, that's like his thing can i get a little i don't want to be too dramatic or too political okay. but i feel like some of the most like <laughs> crazy people that you see in history like some bad guys this is we're talking television this is fantastical stuff so i'm going to mention a horrible person like a guy like like hitler obviously okay. right horrible guy yeah did horrible horrible things but like remember in the movie the king speech you know you remember like he's sitting out with his kids colin first character and he's watching it with his daughters and he's like daddy what is that man saying he's like i don't know what he's saying it but he's saying it very well they're very crazy. Sometimes the craziest people in the world, the worst people in the world, are the most charismatic. Bundy, these horrible dudes, mm -hmm. very charismatic people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with, with Negan, there's no charisma. It's just there's, there's zero charisma. And that's why I don't understand. Like, the he's, story he's, last week about him, like he's like, so well, she was hot, so I just told him I'm going to take his wife, and now the guy's his disciple. I'm like, he's, I, I get that he's crazy and psychotic, but there's no charisma there. I just like even as a crazy, per like, I just I don't I don't yeah, buy not, it. I, don't I, buy I it. really feel like there was a fall off for Negan, yeah. and I, you know, I'm listen. I'm I look like Jeffrey Dean Morgan, so I want people. I want him to. No, we're not getting a laugh out of that anymore. No, no. <laughs> That's that's not being funny. Sasha right? likes Jeffrey oh, Morgan. Oh, burn, yeah. Sinead, yeah. Do you, burn. Danny Duquette's burn. my man. Did you watch um, it? No. Yeah, I just Sasha's not. The girls are staying powerful. But All the right. last two episodes I loved. Yeah. I didn't get to talk about those, and yeah. I actually really I, those I mean, episodes. I love the premiere. I just I have there's too much TV right now. I got no. you. All right, let's go into highs and lows. Sinead, what's first? The Crown. Did everyone finish it? I finished. I did not finish it. I'm saving this like a fine wine. Good job. Oh, wow. I am savoring it. I'm on episode five. Okay. Well, I finished episode five, so I'm on episode six. So I'm just I'm taking my time. There's no there's no rush here. Man, I well, burned. How many are there? Eight. Ten. There's ten. Okay. I'm, 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 yeah, enjoy I'm just slowly. enjoying it. Yeah. Nobody's the boss of you. Yeah, thank you. But it's yeah. amazing, right? I love it. I'm finished, and it was fantastic. <laughs> okay. Can't wait for more. Uh, the Affair season three premiere. Does anybody watch The Affair? My mom. Oh. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah. Should we, should we get Mrs. <laughs> Pearl Raver on here? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, just Mrs. Raver. Uh, Mrs. Just Mrs. Raver. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love the affair. It's 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 good. I, uh, and uh, we have a special guest this season, Brandon Jimmy Fraser. Smith. Oh. Oh yes, I heard about that. You know what? Brandon, Brandon Fraser. Fraser? Brandon Fraser. It's Brandon Fraser from and Joshua Jackson from, sold 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 yeah, sold sold sold. From were they ever in a movie together? Not no. no but that's good. Some of you remember Brandon Fraser from such films as Bedazzled and the Mummy trilogy. Hi. Fantastic actor. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I didn't watch the affair. You know I. Watch the you first, never watched The Affair? I've watched the first five episodes of The Affair, and I couldn't have been more bored. So I'm going to say Ruth Wilson. Mm. Yeah, I love her. I love She's very talented. Ruth. Yeah. Some Ruth. All right, what's next? USA picks up Unsolved, the Tupac and Biggie True crime series. Um, Hi. 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 Yeah. <laughs> totally I think watching. You, I mean, obviously USA is Mr. Robot, but I'm looking forward to see what they do with something like this. Yeah, I think, it'll look, I think it sounds great. Yeah. Saturday Night Live. Oh, my God. Dave Chappelle 
why I just come back and do more TV. He, I just met his stand up was so good. Every character he did was fantastic. He brought back some of the old Chappelle show characters <laughs> for, the Negan, for a walking that dead. Walking dead great. Thing. Dave Chappelle, a walking dead fan. I needed Tyrone Biggins in my life. Yeah. But Kate McKinnon, so MVP, her Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, you got Ginsburg. Me. <laughs> I mean, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, it is, and I want to know what was in that emergency yeah, packet. I'm assuming was, it was Tang. Was tang. But it was so brilliant the way they started the show his monologue which i have a feeling his was not was run fully for lauren michaels which makes me incredibly happy because he said sorry lauren and oh my god a tribe called quest oh they killed. thank you i needed you in my life so badly right now the mix their tape is already on spotify you guys need to go listen to it Ugh. that was the best they killed it i don't i don't usually watch the musical performance because i don't really care oh no but tribe. tribe was and incredible. how about the leslie jones sketch about breastfeeding yeah crying finally of like a full snl and that's what dave Chappelle brings he's just Chappelle's a super the best. talent he's the best but you need to stop smoking it's bad for you he can't he loves those really upset. all right what's next Sinead? blackish okay a fan last week uh tweeted at us hey you guys never talk about blackish i love blackish um I, I usually bring up goldbergs or something like that but i feel like blackish is one of the few crossover shows that appeals to you know it doesn't throw the race card in your face all the time and it doesn't like put down white people it's like a very great show hmm. it's uh, have you not watched it david i watched the the pilot no, oh no. man you Andy should watch Anderson. their episode on the n-word it's unbelievable the thing i love blackish blackish is one of those shows though where i do not watch it week to week because mm. of the format and there's just too many damn episodes but i will go in and randomly watch an episode like w people tweet us often like what's the show you watch when you're feeling sad uh <laughs> i watch blackish a lot of times where i'm just like i Am need something that's good it is so well written it is so well acted anthony anderson is genius i love tracy ellis ross i used to watch girlfriends seeing her on this mm. show makes me so happy that show is fantastic and Lawrence Fishburne man come Ooh, on good good stuff that and for, uh, fresh off the boat are two of I've never best. watched an episode of that yeah they're, they're super fun and uh the mom on uh fresh off the boat just got nominated for a uh, critics choice award yeah so all right Sinead, what's next um this is I'm gonna head out after this yeah but um Aww. you can take over I know okay. I'm sorry guys uh but duty calls yeah so uh the expanse trailer and with that I will I'll be Sinead Sinead you love you. Love you. Love you all. Sinead you all. feel better we love you so much thank you that's an early exit for Sinead DeFries. She goes out on a high note, The Expanse Dropping trailer. Mics. You watch The Expanse. Right? I love The Expanse. What was this trailer like for you? Uh, it, it's just sad because you have to wait until I think February to watch uh, it. Uh, Expanse, Sasha. Sci-fi, Siffy outbid, I think, I think HBO wanted this at one point. This show is five, six million dollars per episode. Damn. For Siffy. Dang. Big money, big money for Siffy. It's she like it kind of reminds me of those Battlestar Galactica. If you like Battlestar Galactica, how many episodes? Watch this show. It's very good. It's how many episodes? two episodes just because they can't afford anymore. Yeah, I know. No, no I, I, I believe it's ten. It's ten. It's ten. Yeah. Okay. It's ten. ten. It's based off a book series, so it's right. definitely worth watching. Very good. Cool. Okay, let's burn through these next ones. The Magician trailer. I don't watch that. I don't watch that show either. I don't either. But, but people seem to like it. It got renewed. People seem to like it. Yeah. And so I watched the trailer. I don't know why people. I don't know, but if you guys like Magana Tova, tweet me and we can get her on the show because she's my friend. Um, let's uh, Game of Thrones. Did you guys watch the deleted scene? I did not. I did not. From from season six, it's Lady Orlena, uh, Lady Orlena yeah. and her idiot son in a in a walking carriage, yeah. which is the funniest. And he's like, "So are you now the Madam of Coin?" And mm -hmm. she's like, "You're stupid." I was like, oh, "Yeah, all, all the promotion drop because the the Blu-ray is coming up." Yeah, right? yeah. Totally. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Goldberg's did a Commando spoof, one of my favorite action movies of all time. Sully, remember when I said I'd kill you last? I lied. It was a great, great. That was a high for me. Uh, Game of Thrones throne reveal. A new throne reveal. There's a photo online you can oh, see yeah. of a new throne in next game of thrones season so that's it looks cool. really interesting that's yeah. very cool. Hi. Mm -hmm. new throne. all right critics choice nominations did what i kind of said we would nobody from uh game uh, from stranger things got nominated mm -hmm. but the show got nominated yeah. which kind of makes sense uh, a lot they got a lot of things right in this one lots of people versus oj yeah. uh, a lot of atlanta interesting a lot atlanta. of flea bags. yeah I, that's why i always I, I like the critics choice awards more than the emmys for television because I, I feel like you know, it's like they're like us. Like yeah. they're like they're even the fans out there. They're the ones like passion. It's not. It's not so mainstream. Yeah. As sure. Emmys are. Yeah. Atlanta deserves all of yeah. the yeah. awards. For I mean, sure. Fleabag is probably not gonna get an Emmy yeah. nomination. I doubt. Well, I this doubt. was a Sasha Conor McGregor's ed exit interview. Okay, oh. you guys. Come on, it's the best. Conor McGregor's <laughs> exit interview with Joe Rogan. I just uh, Instagrammed a short bit of it, but it is so amazing. He's standing there. He's just won. He just won handily. Like the fight was so good, and he's got two belts now. And he's like, "Where's my belt? Where's my 
belt. He's screaming. He wants Dana White to bring him the belt. And as he's standing there, he's like, you know, you guys, I talk a lot of smack I, in the dressing room. Like I've run down everybody in this league. I just want to take this moment to apologize to absolutely nobody. <laughs> and then they throw the second belt on him. And he's like, the double champ does whatever the he wants. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> my inner monologue comes to life. It was the best. Was... I love you, Conor McGregor. And now we know Conor is going to be a dad. Yeah. He yeah. also wants a stake in that $4 billion company. I don't know if that's going to happen, but he does. He wants you know what? He's been yeah. making money, money, money. Yes. And he said from the beginning, I didn't come to fight. I came to take over. Mm -hmm. There you go. Do it, Conor. All right. Beware the Slender Man trailer. This is this creepy. Like Did you see that trailer? Documentary it's creepy. On, H on HBO. There's this, uh, made up, there's this character that was. Wells? No, there's this character called the Slender Man who's. Uh, online uh, fantasy is made up character basically and these two little girls uh, stab uh, another, another girl uh, because of this this character they think they they need to do it but no. it's a made up character it's not a real person it's just it's crazy. Is this a documentary? Uh, yeah, HBO. Yeah. No, I don't want to. It's this. HBO. Oh, no, man. no. All right, finally. Uh, so we're going to watch the Mars event, mm -hmm. and we're going to watch Good Behavior for next week. I love how the, the, the trailers for the Mars, like, are you stay tuned for, they call it the global event. It says yeah. Mars, the global event. I'm like, whoa, that's big. <laughs> that's big. Wouldn't it be the galactic event, though? Ooh. Right? Ooh. The intergalactic is... championship. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, let's go into Twitter questions. As always, hashtag at Collider TV. Talk you guys send in some amazing ones. So as always, thank you. Let's start it out here. I'm doing Sinead's job. I like it. You're doing great. Oh, You're doing great. Appreciate it. You're both nasal too, so it works. Oh yeah, that's what's good. Oh. Okay, this one comes from Tanner Rowan at Tanner Rowan six. Uh, girlfriend got me hooked on Charm. What shows have your significant others hooked you guys to? Uh, Jane the Virgin. Oh, that's such a good show. Yeah, I love oh, Jane the Virgin. Oh, man, that is such a good lady, show. Share that show. I love it. Uh, so I have been a fight fan for a really long time. I've boxed for like over a decade, but I never watched Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate mm. Fighter is so good, and I loved the show The Contender. That uh, did you guys watch it? Yeah, Stallone yeah. did. It was great. Stallone, yeah, Stallone yeah. and um, and Sugar Ray yeah. and uh, Ultimate and was Fighter. Was Oscar involved in that too? At, uh, toward the end, I feel like like maybe okay. in the, like the last season when they changed networks, yeah. but. Ultimate Fighter is so incredible because these are people that you end up following in UFC for a really long time. Like Raquel Pennington, who fought this weekend, was coached by Misha Tate, who she fought this weekend. Mm -hmm. so You're the ones that don't win. Misha Tate yeah. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. Thank God, Misha Tate. Bye. Oh. Um, I don't like that. David? Oh. Any, any girls? Oh. Turn you on to what any about shows? Mrs. Griffin? Has Mrs. Griffin gotten you? That's a significant other. Yeah. Sorry, my Mrs. mom. Griffin. Any yeah. show your mom's she's like, you should watch this. She's another. Yeah, like All in the Family. Oh, oh, yeah. Golden Girls. Yeah, I used to watch Ooh. those. Uh, old school ER. Oh, uh, nice. If it yeah, wasn't for my mom, yeah, I wouldn't have watched Seinfeld. I used to sit with her at night and watch Seinfeld and Frasier. Except Seinfeld sometimes had like some adult topics yeah. that she'd be like, oh, you can't watch this episode. I have to leave <laughs> the room. But uh, yeah, Seinfeld, Frasier. Yeah, it wasn't for my, I, she's the, of all the women in my life, my mom's the one that's influenced me the most on television series. I 100% I nice. agree. My mom and I always watched DR together. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I would always watch Jeopardy together. And my mom taped the soap operas on a VHS. Yeah. Wow. During dinner, she would like be like, ah, I don't like this. And she would fast forward to Three Young and the Restless, get to wow. Bold and the Beautiful, get to yeah. As the World Turns. It was fun. We had a good time. Damn. Mm -hmm. Because uh, of my parents, I listen to NPR. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's for my dad. Fresh oh, yeah. air. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> there is nothing like Great wait, podcast. wait, don't tell me. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, don't tell me is my favorite. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, uh, this one comes from Oliver Queen. He's be all I will give Oliver Queen at star underscore city underscore mayor. He throws in some good TV talk questions. So he's Oliver Queen. Think, he's Oliver Queen. Uh, hashtag oh, Cloud TV this Talk. Guy this week. The arrow? You blocked <laughs> yeah, the arrow? Pretty sure. Oh, yeah. no. Do you think video game movies would work better as a TV show because you don't have to turn 10 hours of story into two? Yes. Yes. 100%. Yes. Well, here's the and thing. And you could do more. The thing about video games in general, I think the reason that video game movies do not work is because so much of the video game experience is player controlled. Mm -hmm. So the only way I think a video game movie or television show would work is if it became a choose your own adventure situation. Mm -hmm. So if a tell, which is something you could do in television, but you cannot do in a film. So if there was a way, and there have been plenty of shows, like I remember there was a Hawaii Five-0 episode where you would uh, call in to see who you thought should have been the murderer oh, and by the end of the episode like they they shot all three endings and the person who got the most votes ended up they ran that storyline i think that's the only way that you can do a video game show because mm. there needs to be player interaction and if you don't have that interaction i don't think you have the same experience as you would have in a video game I'd like to see some older, you know, I thought Pixels was an absolutely horrendous movie. Horrible. But I think that there's some old school video games that you could turn into a TV show that would be pretty funny. Like Pong? Like what? No, like like a Mega Man 
okay. or a, I mean, a Mario Brothers TV show would be incredible. Uh, they're just two plumbers from New York. the best damn yeah. theme song in yeah. the world. Yeah, do, do, do. yeah. Star yeah. Fox. Oh, you guys are active gamers now, but I mean, there's some, the stories that they're telling in game, video games are so great. I mean, you've heard of Last of Us, I assume. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's also uh, uh, Bioshock, which is heavily, uh, Westworld's influenced by Bioshock. Christopher, uh, Jonathan Nolan has said that that show is influenced by Bioshock. Titan. That would work great as a 10, uh, as one of those like 10 episode seasons. I would love to see Mass Effect, which is probably yeah. my favorite video game series of all time, as a series like They've on sci-fi. trying to do that. Well, and they had it. Legend I went to. The, I was at the panel at Comic Con when Legendary, one of the, the the screenwriter, was there saying, "Hey, we're gonna make this film. We got the. We're writing the screenplay right now. It's gonna happen." Like Guillermo came on, talked about Pacific Rim afterwards, and it just never happened yeah. because it, it's just it's such a big story. It's hard to contain in a two-hour film. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's do one more. Uh, this last question comes from Alex M at Duke of Robot. Uh, TV talk. Hashtag TV talk. Which show could have benefited from ending earlier than it did, and at what point do you wish that happened? Hmm. Let's see. I I always say uh, Sopranos. Yeah. Because I think Sopranos went one season too long. I all I honestly think that there. Let me go ahead. So this isn't probably going to be what people. There's a couple. I mean, I think that West Wing toward the end got mm -hmm. a little bit diluted, um, but it was still an incredible show. But this is a weird one. I wish Sons of Anarchy had ended on the penultimate episode and not on the actual final episode. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. Throw it up, Cody. Spoiler. Yeah, throw a little Give spoiler. It. There. Uh, after he shoots his mother, yeah. that should have been the end of the show. Yeah. Mm. The last episode felt so empty. Him riding into like a Jesus. truck yeah. was so dumb. Yeah. It could have been such a great show if they had gone the way they wanted to, which was full on Shakespeare mm -hmm. and just end with the killing of the mother. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's I've always gone back to Supernatural on the CW. I think the first five seasons are they're really good. They're very good, and now it's on what season twelve now. I think. Yeah. I mean, the, and the it's first still the going. first five seasons was really about tackling Lucifer and you know containing him. And you know, spoiler alert, you know, I mean, they they, they get to that place, but they just kind of keep going on and on. I know some people that are still watching Supernatural. They have a, a very rabid fan base, they very sure passionate, do. and it's still going. That's why they're supporting the show. But I feel like if imagine if it just ended after five seasons, it was like just done. I, I think that have been really strong. Who were on that show who yeah. make a very solid living <laughs> of traveling to conventions yeah. for that show. Oh sure, yeah. That's I mean, what it, this it's got show a huge yeah. on Comic Con HQ, uh, Kings of Con. It's yeah. the, it's a uh, Benedict and. Uh, some guy rich or something, and they are just, they were on Supernatural yeah. for like a season, yeah. Yeah. and now this is what they do. That's they all they go, do. It's like Star Trek. Yeah. I mean, once you're in that world, I mean, you got syndication. I mean, yeah. they're on what, TNT or TBS yes. all the time. I mean, I'm good for them, but I just think if it would end after five, it would have been incredible. And leave, sure. us, leave us some leave us some comments in the, in the comment section on YouTube. Let us know what seasons you guys think went a little too long. I'll always say Sopranos because that's my favorite show, but I think it just went too long. Yeah. That's all. All right. Let's go to that time of the show. Oh, boy. Here, Kenny, do it. Kenny, hit those <clears throat> notes. Oh, man, it's been a sick. It's that time for the pick of the week. Ah, oh, even yes. with Flam, he still Woo! does it, Got you Got it guys. in there. Still Sasha Perraver, take it. Uh, you guys, there is a documentary called 13th. It is streaming on Netflix. It was directed. That is not 13th. Not even close to 13th. That was originally uh, Sinead was supposed to do Into the Badlands. Oh, okay. Ray didn't get the graphic yeah, in yeah, time. Yeah. So 13th is uh, <laughs> Sorry, Ava DuVernay, right. who directed uh, Selma. She is the creator of Queen Sugar. She's doing A Wrinkle in Time right now, the first female uh, director of color who gets over $100 million. This is a documentary that, as Americans, you have a duty to see. It is, it is 100 minutes. That is very digestible. There is no reason that if you are sitting in front of your computer or your television that you should not watch this. This is about the American justice system. This is about the war on drugs. This is about how we have criminalized minorities in this country. I can say that this past week has been one of the worst of my life. And watching this documentary made me so angry and it made me so angry for people who are apathetic. You have to watch this. It is important. It is your duty as an American on whatever side of the political spectrum you fall. Because if you care about humanity, you have to care about everybody involved in it. And that is why you need to go watch 13th. Because if you think that this nation was not founded on racism, you are wrong. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very powerful documentary. I had almost had to watch it in two sittings because I like needed a little time. It's hard to, to watch. It's hard to get through, but it's important to get through. And I, and I really feel like there was some, I mean, as much as... I don't like to talk about political stuff that much because uh, I everybody falls and then it becomes a hate mongering thing and and I hate hate, but I will say that the fact that they legalize marijuana recreationally in some states and it's getting more and more goes to show you that the war on drugs is not winnable and the fact that we have incarcerated so many people 
on the war on drugs is silly. Especially for nonviolent non offenses. Nonviolent offenses. It's 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 mm -hmm. silly. So um I I one hundred percent agree with Sasha. The thirteenth is one of the best documentaries I've seen all year. It should win the Oscar. One one hundred percent. Uh so that can brings us to the end of Clatter TV Talk here on a Monday. Thank you guys for watching. As always, before we go, where can the good people find you on the internet? David Griffin. You find me right here every Monday, of course, on TV Talk, as well as at Griffin D E on Twitter and Instagram. And on Saturdays with uh, Christian Harloff and John Campy talking about Star Wars Rebels. You got it right, buddy. Nailed it, bro. Nailed it. Sasha Pearl Raver back in action this week. You can We're find me uh, at Sasha Pearl Raver on Twitter and Instagram, hosting FX Movie Downloads on Fridays on FX. And since she's not here to say it, you should follow Sinead DeFries at uh, Sinead DeFries on Instagram and Twitter. And that's so Sinead.com. And she does mailbag over the weekend oh, right. and hosting Movie yes, Talk yes, on yes. Friday. Yes, yes, yes. All those things. There you go. Uh, I'm at Josh Makuga. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram. You guys can watch my show, The Josh McCuga Show, on YouTube, Thursdays with the Schmoes, here every Monday with my fam on Collider TV Talk. Guys, uh, it's been a weird week here in America. I don't know if the rest of the world has felt it. I know we have international fans. But the only thing I can say is that it's way easier to love somebody than it is to hate them. So hug someone, be together. We are shouldn't be separated. We should all try and be together and love one another. So spread the word, spread the love, and as always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.